This drug review is for Ondansetron, also known by its trade name of Zofran. You might recognize this little vial with the green top. We carry it in Lifestar EMS ambulances. You'll find it in emergency departments and hospitals and medical facilities all over the place. Very popular drug, very commonly given. It's also available in an oral dissolving tablet or ODT form, which in my opinion probably tastes just as bad as it would if you cracked open that vial and drank it. Not saying you should do it, use the oral version. The topics we're going to cover in this review include the classification of Ondansetron, because if you understand how it's classified, you can begin to understand what kind of drug it is and how it works. Then we're going to look in our protocols and see where it's located, for what reasons do we give Ondansetron, and how much do we give. Then we're going to dig a little bit deeper and look at exactly how it works and where in the body it works, and then we'll end up looking at some of the precautions that we've been taught when we learned how to give Ondansetron, and we'll answer the question, can it really cause torsade de point? Is it potentially a risky drug? How risky is it? Let's start with the classification of Ondansetron. Ondansetron is a 5-HT3 receptor antagonist. Yeah, that didn't really help, did it? Well, 5-HT3 is 5-hydroxytryptamine receptor antagonist. Does that help? Nope, not at all. Uh, it's also known as a serotonin blocker, and this starts to give you a clue how exactly this drug works. It's also referred to as a serotonin receptor antagonist, and the family of Ondansetron are referred to as cetrons. So cetron is how Ondansetron ends. It also ends granisetron and palinocetron and dolacetron. And did I pronounce those correctly? I don't have a clue. Probably not. Let's talk about where we find it in our protocols. You'll see Ondansetron listed in our interfacility protocols. It's simply listed as one of our drugs and a little bit of information and dosing is there. It is also in our pre-hospital protocols. Here's a copy of the Washington County pre-hospital protocols that we currently use at Lifestar EMS. And you'll see here at the paramedic level for nausea and vomiting, Ondansetron is listed as a dose of four milligrams, slow IV, and look at that, slow is in all capital letters. There's an important reason for that, which we'll discuss in a little bit. It may also be repeated one time if needed, but down here you'll see a box that requires us to call medical control if we want to give any more than two doses. It's also in our vertigo protocol, but that is only because right here at the bottom, it says vertigo is associated with nausea and vomiting, so it's basically the same protocol. Here is the state of Wisconsin scope of practice that lists all of the skills and all the medications and what level of license they are either optional or required for. And you'll see here on Dancetron is listed as optional for intermediate paramedic and critical care paramedic level of service. Let's move on to how exactly Ondansetron works. Originally, Ondansetron was developed for cancer patients because cancer patients were getting damage to their GI tract and the cells lining that GI tract would release serotonin when they got damaged by radiation therapy or chemotherapy and that serotonin would bind to nerves that transmit impulses to the vomiting center in the brain, which in turn would stimulate the vomit reflex. The 5-HT3 receptor antagonists, like Ondansetron, prevent serotonin from binding to those receptors, thereby reducing the likelihood of nausea and vomiting. For a quick view of exactly how this works, let's zoom in on the GI tract and find some of those neurons. Here you have a 5-HT3 receptor, and as the body suffers some sort of an insult, either the cancer patient undergoing therapy, or perhaps it's somebody taking a medication that makes them nauseous, or perhaps it's somebody who's had a traumatic injury, and now when they're in the back of the ambulance, riding backwards, bouncing down the road on the way to the hospital, and they get nauseous. 
serotonin is flowing through their system. It's binding to these 5-HT3 receptors, which stimulates the nerves, which stimulates the vomit reflex. So we give them some on Dancitron. That's an antagonist, or it works against the serotonin. And as the on Dancitron flows through the system, it binds to the 5-HT3 receptors, blocking the serotonin and eliminating or reducing the nausea. How risky is it to give ondansetron to a patient anyways? We are told to worry about a couple things when we give ondansetron, and that's based on a caution that cetrons are known to prolong the QT interval in the heart rhythm. Uh-oh, now we got to talk about heart rhythm. Well, let's do this in an easy 30 seconds. This is a normal sinus heart rhythm. This measurement here is the QT interval. If this QT interval starts to get longer and longer and longer, it can be a problem and potentially even lethal. Normally, a QT interval is somewhere in the neighborhood of about 400 milliseconds, and if it starts approaching the neighborhood of 500 milliseconds, we start to look at the patient kind of funny because we get concerned about a potentially lethal rhythm developing. Some people already have a prolonged QT interval, and that's called prolonged QT syndrome. These people sometimes can just suddenly go into a lethal heart rhythm and die without warning, and some people get a pacemaker defibrillator installed when this syndrome is discovered. If you prolong the QT interval long enough, you could potentially cause a rhythm called torsade de point. This is what torsade de point looks like. It's a very ugly rhythm, and it can be lethal for the patient. Another name for torsade de point is polymorphic ventricular tachycardia with prolonged QT interval. There you go. Prolonged QT interval is right there in the title. If the patient goes into torsade de point and they're relatively stable, we might consider giving 1 to 2 grams of magnesium sulfate as a treatment. But if they're kind of unstable, we'll go straight to electrical therapy and everyone has a bad day. How did we find out that ondansetron can cause prolonged QT? There were a series of studies. This one came out in 2011. And in this study, uh, they took a look at the effect of ondansetron on patients that have cardiovascular disease or other risk factors for torsades. And what they found is that on average, after giving ondansetron, there was about 19.3 prolongation of the QT interval. Remember, normal is about 440, and abnormal is somewhere in the neighborhood of 500. We're talking about adding 19 to that number. So their conclusion was if you give ondansetron to patients that are at risk for torsade due to other factors, you should engage in cardiac monitoring for at least 120 minutes after giving ondansetron. The following year, the FDA came out with a series of recommendations, and what they said is that there have been a number of studies about the administration of ondansetron, and they suggest that the 32 milligram single intravenous dose is just too much. You could develop torsades. Yeah, that's right, 32. We normally give 4 milligrams pre-hospital, and they're worried about massive doses of 32 milligrams. That was 2012. In 2016, there was a study that came out. It was only 22 adults, but it was a controlled study in the emergency department. And what they found is giving on Dacitron adds about 20 milliseconds to the QT interval. So again, from 440 to 500, we're talking about adding 20. So their conclusion is that QT prolongation does occur after you get ondansetron, but the clinical impact is questionable because there were no serious cardiac electrical events. Another study two years later in 2018 found basically the same thing. This is again in emergency departments, and they found here that about 16 to 18 milliseconds were added to the QT interval. And so they did find, when they say significant, they mean statistically significant QT prolongation did occur uh, but none of the patients had any related adverse cardiac effects. And that's the story of serotonin and nausea and what ondansetron does to help prevent that. Remember, we give it in doses of 4 milligrams slow IV push, and we can repeat that dose once 
We are supposed to be concerned about prolonging the QT interval, particularly in people who have risk factors, including prolonged QT syndrome. However, the dosing that we give pre-hospital is highly unlikely to lead to any cardiac arrhythmias. But be on the alert because we prepare for all eventualities. Thanks so much for stopping by. If you liked the video, click like, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. See ya.